Welcome back to Click Capital, everybody. And Wall Street and the media is still trying to convince you to invest in NVIDIA up here. Still got a lot of bullish headlines coming across the wires today, like this one here. NVIDIA stock is the most overbought in 18 months, but that doesn't mean that the rally is over. NVIDIA's massive AI fueled rally just helped power the stock market above a key level that suggests more upside ahead. Is NVIDIA stock just getting started? NVIDIA stock has more than doubled this year already, but analysts say explosive growth in AI gives NVIDIA plenty more upside ahead. And even though the Nasdaq is up 30% year to date, apparently according to this author, the tech trade is back driven by AI craze and the prospect of a less aggressive Fed. Even though Fed fund futures are increasing their chances that the, that the Fed's going to keep on hiking. The Nasdaq is about to break out thanks to Nvidia. Here's how high it could go. Ride the Nvidia wave. Wall Street says that undeniably pricey stock can keep roaring. Nvidia's stock still has far more room to run despite monster rally analysts say. Nvidia will still surpass Apple's valuation. Nvidia's stock could rise fivefold in 10 years on AI trend. And a lot of people thrown in the towel on it, saying I was wrong, the AI hype is real. And wouldn't it be great if we could just follow what the media and Wall Street tell us and then just make all these easy investments? We'd all be billionaires pretty soon, right? Unfortunately, if you look back in history, it's just not the case. There's this little thing called the magazine cover indicator. And that's basically when the media is talking about a certain fad and really highlighting it, saying we're in a new paradigm, things have changed, it's different this time. They have a really bad track record and actually make for a really good contrarian indicator and we can see this throughout financial market history dating back over a hundred years and that's because by the time journalists and magazines and the mainstream media cover it that means everyone's talking about it and that's why they want to run the story on it because that's going to get the most uh, purchases and clicks and reads and shares and so you can kind of use the mainstream media as the boiling point indicator for a certain trend or fad and you can almost be sure that the next major magazine covers coming out in the next few weeks are going to have AI all over it along with Nvidia and why this time's different etc etc. However while the media and Wall Street analysts are telling us to buy the stock it's only just getting started their mates across the other side of the floor are actually shorting the stock and we can see that in dark pool data with dark pool traders actually having a net 16 billion dollar short position in the stock and that's a record short position they've had for quite some time in the stock here and also wait to just the insiders start selling like they always do in the peak especially CEO Jensen Huang he always offloads a huge amount of stock every time we peaked. Last time back in the late 2021 peak, he offloaded $270 million of stock just a few weeks after they reported earnings back then. So we'd not be surprised to see the same thing again with insiders and dark pool sophisticated traders selling the stock while the media and Wall Street analysts are telling everyone else to buy it up here. So it is a risky trade, both long and short. We could still keep easily running into the 400s. However, we could still inevitably fill this gap Yep. As we've had quite the run over the last half year, coming from the low 100s up to almost 400 now. So yes, AI is real. Nvidia is the leader for now. They do have competition coming for them. However, I think it'd be a fair thing to say that it could already be baked into the price considering the stock price has almost gone 4x in a little over seven months. And if it is going to keep running higher, you've got to ask yourself what's exactly going to take it above 400 to $500 a share because there isn't a huge short position in the stock to be squeezed it's only about one and a half percent of the float and we're almost at a trillion dollar market cap so to push that higher and higher towards the biggest company in the world really takes a lot of money and you could say a lot of that's already been invested in the stock because everybody and their dog knows about nvidia now so they're really going to have to crank out a huge q2 number and give big q3 guidance to keep this thing going and the market has to hold up as well and nvidia has certainly done that pushed the nasdaq up again here today breaking out to new highs for the year up two and a half percent to finish the week really strong even bringing up the equal weight nasdaq to new year-to-date highs as well however it's still the tail of two markets got the equal weight s p 500 still downtrending underneath the 50-day vwap along with the dow mid caps and arguably the small cap russell 2000 still in a downtrend too 
Market also rallying on optimism. We are about to get a deal any moment now. May come out tonight as I'm making this video. If not tomorrow, Saturday or Sunday. I'd say these two guys want to just get it done and push it through the House and Senate next week. And also helping the matter was yelling. Coming out today, extending the debt ceiling deadline to June 5. So that had previously been June 1, which was Thursday coming up. Now we're looking at Monday week. So just giving a few more days for the congressional leaders to get it done. And all that AI buzz and a bit of relief over the debt ceiling helped to get a bit of a bullish day on here with green across the board especially in the semis and mega cap tech amazon on tesla showed up and we continue to seeing that rotation into the growth sectors out of the defensive sectors see healthcare utilities and consumer defensive coming off again and inflation's looking to be sticky because we got that core pce price index coming today which is the fed's preferred measure of inflation looks at price increases of goods and services across the economy while stripping out the more volatile food and energy items and month over a month we're expecting a 0.3 percent increase we actually came in above that at 0.4 personal spending still healthy grew 0.8 percent month over month and durable good orders actually beat as well we're expecting that to decline they actually increased 1.1 percent and consumer sentiment strong as well 59 compared to 57 we're expecting on the michigan consumer sentiment survey and with that strong inflation and economic data it pushed the odds up as you'd expect from the fed fund futures market that the fed will hike next month to 64 percent and we're now looking at a greater chance that they'll hike again in july rather than stay where we are now so 27 percent chance we'll get a second hike in july and this is creating some huge divergences in the market, notably with tech, because up until the last couple of weeks, normally tech trades inverse to rates. That is when rates move up, typically tech stocks fall down. And you can see that in this chart here. So I've got the US government two-year government yield inverted, overlaid with the NASDAQ QQQ in the orange line. And you can see when rates move up, the NASDAQ index typically moves down and vice versa. And we've been having that relationship for a while now. As you can think of tech stocks as long duration assets. And look what we've seen in the last couple of weeks as the bond market reprices itself to what the Fed is saying. And we've seen the two-year gone from 380 now up to 450. 56, but the Nasdaq is absolutely ripped up on this AI buzz thing and we've now got this huge divergence and there's a lot more divergences all over the place here's a spread chart of bond market volatility measured by the move index against the equity market volatility VIX and that's at highs we haven't seen since the global financial crisis back in 2008 so basically this chart is telling us that bond market volatility is much much higher relative to equity market volatility we also got other divergences going on in the bond market. And here's a chart of the high yield bonds, which are more sensitive to risk and economic growth out there. And I've overlaid it with SP500 in the orange line. And you can see those two track pretty closely. However, in the last month or so, they've diverged a lot. So stocks are feeling a lot better here than their counterpart high-risk bonds. You can see the same thing in the breadth of the market as well. So here's a chart of the amount of stocks above the 50-day average, currently at 35%. And we've got the S&P 500 pretty much sitting at its year-to-date highs. Last time we were up here on Feb 2, the breadth was at 74%. So three quarters of stocks were above their 50-day average back here. Since we are last at this high in the market, the breadth has deteriorated since then. And that's typically a sign of an unhealthy bull run. We've got other contrarian indicators like the put call ratio really low at 0.72 because we've got record call buying. And that's typically another contrarian indicator as well when everybody's buying call options is typically we're closer to a top than a bottom. Got the stock market diverging with the dollar as well. Typically a stronger dollar is bearish for stocks and I've got the inverted dollar index here. We can see that the dollar has gotten stronger over the last couple of weeks now sitting at 104. And again, stocks define that holding up there. Fear and greed index is usually a pretty good contrarian indicator as well. We're approaching extreme greed levels here at 68. And huge day on the options market. We're normally busier on Friday with a lot of contracts expiring. But today was an exceptional. Over 46 million contracts changing hands. And again, 57% of them calls. And we can just see how much call volumes there are today. 2.8 million calls in Tesla versus 1.6 puts. NVIDIA 1.1 million calls versus 600,000 puts. And similar story in all the other mega cap techs. And we can see that in this chart here of NASDAQ daily call volume actually approaching decade highs here. And again, this is another good contrarian indicator that's actually peaked out just before 
the end of the bull market in late 21 as we sold off hard into 2022. But with this AI buzz again, that's helped inspire a lot of traders to pile in call options on mega cap tech. Overall, dark pool buyers bounced a little bit back here today, but still sitting in neutral territory after really pulling back from this market the last couple of days. Corporate insiders continue to pull back as well. We can see that in this blue line here with their purchases. And yesterday we came in 169 sales to 100, 104 purchases. Got international stock indices trying to find some support here and catch up with the American counterparts. Nikkei is actually ripping out to new highs and the Aussie and China hanging in there. VIX one day shot up to 20 here today as the market is anticipating some volatility over the weekend with the debt ceiling deal. If we don't get that done by Monday open, you can imagine that would make the market a bit more nervous and we still see volatility moving up a bit. Although the VIX 30 day is still a little subdued here under 18, but it is closing the gap with the back end of the curve and the skew index jumping up to levels we haven't seen in a while up to 146 here today so this measures the cost of out of the money put options on the SPX you could think of it as a cost of tail risk hedging insurance and so there's a lot of people buying some tail risk hedging today and what is no doubt protecting themselves against the debt ceiling going the wrong way also you've seen similar action in the US one year credit default swap which is again basically insurance on the US government not paying its debt actually hitting all time highs recently so the market's never been more worried than the US US government won't meet their debt repayment obligations as they are right this moment. SP500 and NASDAQ hitting highs for the year, but we've still got most stocks below their 20, 50 day and 200 day averages. And we can see here the growth versus defensive sectors really getting into overbought territory. Got the entire candle here today outside the top of our buy sell band. Last time that happened was on February 2 and the market kind of consolidated and pulled back here for a bit. Same with high beta stocks versus low volatility. So that's that rotation to growth out of the defensive sector growth versus value breaking out another spread predicting weaker economic growth ahead is the copper versus gold spread still on a downtrend and the yield curves diving back down into deep inverted territory here's a look at the two-year government yield and the 10-year as well really strong and fed fund futures continuing to trickle up with the market saying no chance we're getting a cut this year anymore and even though we've got those higher rates tlt is hanging in there got a bit of a bullish engulfing pattern here today at support same with high yield trying to hang in there dollar holding firm at 104 got a little Bounce in commodities here today at 1.6% across the complex. Gold trying to find support mid 1900s. Crude hanging in there. Arc up a little bit here today, but unfortunately missed out on all the AI buzz. Another huge day in semis up almost 5% today on huge volume. Same with the bots ETF, record volume up here today. Energy stocks had a pullback. Regional still hanging in there. And the defensive sectors trying to find support here. And I think this is a good contrarian play here on utilities. Actually picked up a long position in the utility sector fund here today. As we come back down to the support level, Sitting at our lower buy sell band on a hammer formation. I think here's not a bad spot for a little bit of a mean reversion play back up to the 50 day VWAP. BlackRock holding up and Tesla trying to join in on the party looking to come up to its year to day highs as well. Had a really good day here up almost 5% on volume. Just a quick look at Nvidia while I speak trading at 390 in the post market hours. After hours on Fridays always really quiet as most traders have gone home for the weekend or hitting the bars. However, we couldn't take out the highs from yesterday, which was 394.80. So a bit of an inside day here, and we may consolidate here for a while. Would not be surprised to see us come up and tag 400, maybe even go above it next week. But like I said, that needs a big amount of energy and money to lift this trillion dollar stock higher now. And if we continue to see dark pools and insiders sell off into that, that's just another headwind. Microsoft breaking out for the year again. Same with Amazon on volume, as did Meta. AMD still ripping higher, along with Netflix. Meme stocks were mixed, and we've got C3 AI now coming back to its highs that we saw last when Hindenburg Research, the same company that has gone after Carl Icahn, went after this company as well with a short report attacking the company's culture and the CEO, which has a track record of changing the company name to the latest fad and trying to hype the stock up when you actually look at the business numbers. They do nothing but lose money every quarter on no growth in their revenue at all. But because they've got the word AI in their stock name, that's enough for a lot of traders to pile in on it. And we've got earnings coming out next week, so we'll see what they have to say. But I'm sure they'll mention the word AI 100 times on their earnings call. And who knows, maybe this will continue to suck in more investors at these highs. We had earnings come out from Ulta Beauty today, and even though they came in as expected, the market marked them down significantly, 13%, as they don't like its prospects going forward. 
Got a little bit of a bounce up here today in Intel after we sold off yesterday. And the big winner today was Marvel Technology, another semi ripping up on its better than expected earnings. They only beat by 5.8%, but because of all this AI hype, the market mucked them up 32%, even though we had already gone up 20% into the earnings over the last couple of weeks. And once again, we've got Target stock sliding again today as the silent majority become not so silent anymore. Carl Icahn stock on an inside day trying to hold here. And finally, Schwab just continuing to hold here above its 50. Okay, back to the main indices. We've got the SP500 just came within a tick or two of its year-to-date high, even though the SPY ETF actually just surpassed its high by a few ticks. Now got a massive divergence between central bank liquidity in the market and the SP500. Now almost 450 points. The only other time we saw that big of a bearish gap was back here in mid-August last year. And the market eventually caught up to that central bank liquidity and fell 800 points over the next two months. So once again, just another divergence in this market. It's divergences galore everywhere. And for the market to keep ripping in the face of all these divergences would truly be to fine. However, that's the market. Anything's possible. Nothing's guaranteed. And we've just got to play it the way we see according to all the data and indicators. And that's why I'm continuing to keep my portfolio moderately tilted net short 40%. Going forward, because of all those divergences, I still think the risk is to the downside. However, as many of you know, it hasn't been an easy short. We've been stalling out here for what seems like forever. But if the short sided portfolio is not full of mega cap tech like the NASDAQ, then it's really not that bad when you look at the equal weight SP500. That's in a downtrend here. We can see that, that it's still underneath its 50. So under the hood, the market is still weak. It's just those concentrated top end of the market. That has really defined pretty much everything else. And it'll just be interesting to see how much longer that dynamic can continue on for. And that's all I've got for you in this interesting week on Wall Street. Thanks for following along with me. And if you found value, please hit that like button. Have a great weekend and I'll see you again Monday afternoon.